Hi guys, thinking through code here and with another video related to grid geometry management. Today we're going to go a lot more in depth in this feature of TK Inter. This is part two of the part one video that I showed you guys last time of very basic use of grid. If you haven't seen that video, I totally recommend you to do it because I build up upon what I taught last time. And uh, today we're just going to be talking about behavioral aspects of grid geometry, the sticky column span and row span ar arguments, which can actually really change the behavior of GUI application. Another advice that I have for you guys, change the quality of the video to 1080p. Sometimes I notice that the code can be seen blurry, but as soon as you change that feature, on the bottom right corner, you have a settings wheel with YouTube, change that out to 1080p and you're gonna be able to see my code very clearly. Without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, guys, so we come back to our GUI application uh, consisted of frames, we added two additional frames to the ones that we had in our previous video. One that's gonna be yellow, the other one that's gonna be green. I already configured the styling over here. If you choose another color, that's up to you. That's no problem. Uh, this is our, sec our third frame that we have right here. It's gonna be of a width of 250 and a height of 250. And our fourth frame is gonna be simply 150 by 100. Now, I want you to notice that our grid methods that we're calling for each frame are starting to have more arguments. So, of course, our main frame on row 0, column 0, and second on row 1, column 0. We're going to put our third frame right beside our main frame by giving it the same row, but the next column right after. And our fourth frame is going to be on our bottom corner, where it's going to be right beside our second frame. So, the next row, which is row 1, and column 1. So, if we run this application, what do we have? This is what we see in front of our screen. We see basically that whenever you place a frame or any widget, this could be a button or a label inside of a column and row, it's going to be centered inside of those two sets paced for rows and columns. If you have a set space, of course, since I explained last time that rows and columns are simply going to take the size of the widget that they have. So great example right here. The column zero of our GUI application took the size of 250 and then centered the next widget right into it. And the row one of our GUI application took the height of, uh, of this one, which is, if I'm not mistaken, 200, and then decided to simply keep that height and center our next widget on it. Now, this GUI application doesn't look that great, right? Just a bunch of squares that are all over the place. What if I want this frame to actually have its left side aligned with the left side of my main frame? And I want this frame to have its top side align with the top side of my row. How are we going to do that? And that's actually what we're going to achieve with our next feature. So let me introduce you guys to Sticky. Sticky is an argument that the grid method is going to take whenever you're placing your widget inside of your GUI application. Sticky actually can take a string of letters as an argument. And it's only four letters that can be accepted. It's N, S, E, W. And just to portray this to you guys, N is actually equal to North, E is for East, w, w is for West, and S is for South. And to properly explain the behavior of Sticky, I want to just show you guys this picture. So over here, what you can notice is that your row and column in your grid is actually portrayed in a surface area where your widget is inside. So if you look at the compass right here, let's just say that that's my widget. That's either my frame or a button or a label. And they all have the same sides. They have four sides assigned to them. They have north, that is the top side, south as the bottom, west as the left, and east as the right. So whenever you assign north, you're basically saying that the north part, the top part of your widget needs to stick to the top part of your area. So whatever frame you have in that row and column, if you assign it the the to stick to the north, it's going to stick to the top. If you assign it to stick to the west, it's going to stick to the left, and then so on and so on. And you can assign it to stick to many more places. If you want it to stick to the bottom and to the top, you can give it the argument of N and S. Left and right would be W, E, and all four sides would basically be N, S, E, W. So back to what we wanted to do with our GUI application, we basically wanted our fourth frame to be aligned with the top of a row and our second frame to be aligned with the left side of our first column, meaning that we're going to have to target the north space of this area and the west space of this area defined by column zero and row one and column one and row one. So without further ado, let's get right to the code. 
So we're going to start with our fourth frame over here. So in order to do so, we're going to go right to our grid method and add our sticky argument. Sticky is going to be equal to N on this scenario, right? Since we want it to stick to the top and our second frame, we want it to be on the left side. So our sticky is going to have an argument of West. When we rerun this application, we achieved exactly what we wanted, guys. Your second frame is to the left and your fourth frame is to the top. Now, you know what? I encourage you guys, let's just experiment a little more with this, uh, with this uh, new argument that we we're learning right now. So we're going to add sticky for west and east for this frame over here, the second frame. We're going to check it out. So frame two, west and east. First, we're going to stop running. And you know what? We're going to go straight to our fr fourth frame. We also want it to stick to the bottom. So north and south. And by the way, guys, for sticky, it doesn't matter the order at which you're giving the, the arguments. You could put uh, south, north, or east, west. It really doesn't matter. Sticky is able to actually make the difference between all of them. So when we rerun this application, you notice something very interesting. First of all, our second frame was giving the height and width of 200 by 200. It kept that height, but its width now has been increased to 250. And the same thing happened, something similar really happened to our fourth frame where its height was 100, but now it took the complete height of a row, which is actually 200. Now, the interesting fact here, what I'm trying to display is that sticky can actually overrule the, the, si the default uh, size that you're giving it, right? So the frame or the widget, the whatever size you're giving it, if you make it sticky on all four sides, it's simply going to take the, the whole area in which you assigned it to by the, the rows and columns. So we're going to do that with our fourth frame. Right now it's north, south, east, west. Let's give that. And then when we rerun this application, there you have it. It's stuck to both north, south, east, uh, west, and east, meaning that its whole size now has completely changed because you decided to pretty much give it the size of the area that it's been assigned to. And that's how you pretty much not only overrule the centering um, default positioning by TK enter by grid when you when you place something in there, but you also overrule the default size of your widget. So it is something to be mindful when you're designing an application, a GUI application. So now we're going to talk about column span and row span, two other very important features of grid that influence the look of your GUI application. Right now, our GUI application is very simple. You can see it right in front of you. You have the rows, the columns, everything's assigned to a specific area and with sticking to the right areas as well. But uh, what if I want a bar at the bottom and another bar to the right of the GUI application that actually takes the space of more than one column and more than one row? So let's just get right to it. So if we try to actually portray this in our, into our current GUI, uh, we're going to go ahead with the code. So over here, you see the configurations of styling. The first one being the blue one that I took from once again, color hunt and the other one being the red one. I'm going to start with the blue one that I want in the bottom of my GUI application. I want that whole length, that whole bar in, in the bottom. So I'm going to call it horizontal. And since being, we've been working with frames, I'm going to make TTK frame, same parent widget. We're going to give it a height of, since it's a bar, it's not that long. We're going to make it a uh, hundred. And then for width, you know, logically, I think that maybe we should give it 250 and then add the other 250 from the third frame to it, right? Because that pretty much portrays the, the full width. So we're going to give it 500. Since we're, we're picturing it, just taking the full place of 250 plus 250 in the bottom, right? And of course, our style, which is, I called it horizontal. Now, when we're going to place it with our grid, from what I portrayed before, this frame would have to be on the third row, right? Because we see row zero here, row one below it, and then the third row would be row two over here. So it would have to be there. However, the column is a little bit unsure. So how about we just give it the that width of 500 and we simply just place it on the column zero. We're gonna give it the row of two because it's a third row and the column is gonna be equal to zero. If I run this application, what do I get? I get something a little bit awkward, right? We 
basically realize here that when you're only using row and column, you're simply modifying the size of the area that you're assigning to it. So like right here, my row zero simply just got a width of 500. And it can be shown by this one getting centered because it's not sticky on east and west. And this one actually following because it is sticky on east and west. So that's what column span is extremely important because we're telling our GUI application that we're starting on column zero, but we want to span into our next column. So to apply it, we're simply going to put column span equal to two right here onto our grid arguments. And then when I run this, I got exactly what I wanted. There you go. So now just for fun, let's put three. <clears throat> if I run this application, here's what's going on. Since on my third column, I have no widget, no button, no label, no frame. I have a width of zero automatically. And that width is added into my span. So technically this one is spanning onto the third column, but the width of the third column is zero. So therefore it's not going to have any extrusion over here. It's simply just going to stop with the rest. In order for this to extend, we need to put another element on the third column, which is what we'll do right now with our vertical widget, which is going to be our vertical red frame. Let's give it a width of 100 and a height of 350. The style, we're going to give it the vertical style that I defined at the beginning of this video. And then on our grid, we're placing it on row zero and on our third column, which is going to be equal to two. Run this application again. And we got something awkward, right? But then again, logical. So since this one is spanning on three columns, the next element that was added to it pretty much just centered this element onto our whole column. So the column of this element span into three. And now since it's only 500 and it's not sticky, it's only centered to it. Now what's going on here is that the row of this, of this one adapted to the largest element, which is my frame, my red frame over here. To actually avoid this, I'm going to make this one span onto all these three rows. And I'm, I'm going to make this column span only stay in two. So like I said, you know, things are just adapting. This one stayed on, on row zero because it's not spanning on row span. And this one span onto our third column but it's not sticky so let's just fix this around so first thing first our blue frame we're going to give it a column span of two and to always just stay safe we're going to give it a sticky of north south east and west and then this one row span is going to be equal to three run this again we're almost there guys we're almost there what is actually the one thing that is going to overrule this and not keep it centered, no matter the height that we give it, is simply just going to make it sticky. So now we realize that this is spanning onto three column, three rows, sorry, but it's getting centered to it because, like I said, if it's not sticky, it's simply going to be in the middle. So st sticky is going to be equal to north and south. Now when we try this, there we go. All done. And just how I showed you guys how important sticky actually is, I encourage you guys to set it up for all of your frames. Like I said before, the order in which they are does not matter. We're going to run this. Actually, let's change this one to... 350 and then boom now that we change one and a row or a column actually changes you see the rest are fine and everything is behaving the way it's supposed to all of that because of the sticky argument but then again keep in mind that this one is spanning onto three rows and this one is spanning onto two rows just as we wanted it and that's it for this video so we reached the end of the video guys i thank you so much for actually staying till the end and learning with me if you like this video don't forget to click the like button subscribe or click the notifications bell if you didn't like it feel free to leave a comment make sure you always practice the code always do it while i'm doing it guys if you need to rewatch it go right ahead practicing is the only way to learn how to code